Me traumé because when I got to, um, it's my first funeral. Okay. I'm, I'm like eight. And he's in La Caja and me saying, oh, do you want to see him? And I'm like, oh, well, I guess. And they go, and I don't know who it was. Like, I think it was my grandma. They picked me up and put me on top of like the casket. So all I see is like his face. And I still Palido. like till this day can tell you que like me traumé. What is up, everyone? I'm your host, Alanized, and this is Noche de Pendejadas, your favorite talk show turn podcast, in donde yo traigo a tus influencers favoritos para platicar y posiblemente sacarle sus trapitos al sol. Please help me welcome tonight's guest, Jonathan Chavez. Hola, yes. hola, ¿cómo Ay, estás, que no amigo? Se me dio el Ay, I know why. ¿Cómo I know estás, it amigo? Is. Good, good. How are It's you? It's been a long time, you guys. Si ustedes no saben, Jonathan estuvo en la primera temporada de Noche de Pendejadas antes de que fuera esto. Estuviste yes. con nosotros exactamente agosto 26 del 2020, güey. Oh my God, I was the pioneer. Años. You literally, yeah. <laughs> you were literally one of the first people that believed in my vision. Y pues mira, ahorita te tenemos otra vez en so la fun. cuarta temporada. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Si me puse un poquito celoso that I wasn't like part of this. I was like, uh, I want to be on the production side now. <laughs> Pero ahora sí ya le tocó, you guys. I've been yes. wanting to get you back on the podcast for a while. And I was like, you know what? Ya es tiempo. Te he visto crecer muchísimo desde la primera vez que estabas en mi podcast. I was actually watching our old episode yesterday. Yes. That episode was only 14 minutes. We barely got to meet you through the episode. Yo hoy siento so que quick. hoy te vamos a conocer un poquito más. 14 minutes, yeah. It was 14 uh -huh. minutes. Yeah, it was quick. No then. nos contaste And mucho. And we were so different. It was different. Yeah. I feel like the whole vibes were different. We We looked so different. We looked, mm -hmm. and we even were in different aspects of doing different things in our lives. So, yeah. estoy super emocionado de tenerte aquí. Today's episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre proportionized ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make your home cooking easy, fun, and and affordable that is why it's america's number one meal kit with so many in-season ingredients you'll taste all the freshness of fall in every bite of hello fresh's chef crafted recipes produce travels from the farm to your doorstep for peak ripeness you can taste hello fresh does all the shopping and meal planning for you ingredients arrive at your doorstep pre-proportionized and ready to cook along with pictured step-by-step -step recipe cards how easy is that if you guys want to go ahead and And try HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 Allen and use code 50 Allen for 50% off plus free shipping. That is HelloFresh.com slash 50 Allen and use code 50 Allen for 50% off plus free shipping. Get started with HelloFresh today and see why they're America's number one meal kit. Obviamente siempre empezamos con our little shop, pero me acaba de decir Jonathan que no has tomado en un año, güey. Cuéntanos. No, no, no. I stopped drinking at, on my birthday last year at a festival, actually. Estaba bien drogado. No, I'm just kidding. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was at a festival and I had like a, what do they call them? Like epiphanies. Uh -huh. And I just felt like, It, you know festivals like it was Baja Beach Fest okay so it was our Sunday and ya estamos pedos like it, we had gone on forever like drinking it was like a three day bender and I don't know like late night I was like guys I'm gonna stop drinking like this is disgusting I don't know like I had a realization you know I was like I drink too much I get angry when I drink so I'm gonna stop like this whole year this 23rd year and that's what I did I stopped drinking and a lot of people doubted me, so I guess that's what kept me going. Was it hard? To prove them wrong. Ah, you're like, not I was for like, me, now I'm going to stop to prove them wrong. It was so hard, yeah. It like, was did so you have, like, a lot of temptation around you? Dude, so much. Like, tanto que en veces... <laughs> you know the events, you know, the yeah. events we go to where people, you know, that's how they have drinks and stuff. Me abrían hasta la boca and be like, sha, sha, you know, you know, like at parties yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And I'd be like, no, no, I'm good. So it was so hard to say no. Because also I don't want to look like the party pooper. I don't want to look like, oh, he's boring. I know what you mean, Because people treat yeah. you like that. Like, I, w I guess I was like more scared of losing my reputation that I was no longer the party animal. No, because <laughs> like, you yeah. were a party yes. animal. Yo me acuerdo cada vez que te miraba en eventos o en fiestas, yes. siempre con tu botella, güey. So I started lying and saying, oh, I pre-gamed. I'm already so done. Like, pa' que pensaran that I, like, that's why I couldn't drink. And so I was like, no, I'm going to tell them the truth. Like, ya no tomo. It was hard. I mean, recently at my cousin's wedding, 
like one of his groomsmen or what are they called? See, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he like he wouldn't let me go, so I took the shot and I hold it in my mouth because it was like. I have been, been drinking for a year, so I was like, no, I'm not going to break it just for this guy. And then I grabbed the cup and spit it out. That's crazy, yeah. which congratulations. Thank a you. year sober. It's a big accomplishment. ¿Sabes qué? Yo también ya tengo meses. Sobriety. Supuestamente yo que también ya voy a parar de tomar because it takes a toll. It's hard, especially, you know, in the influencer world, cuando hay parties Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, y siempre quieren que tomes. It gets hard. The other day, que era el cumpleaños de mi hermana y de mi hermano, uh -huh. todos estaban tomando y por primera vez en un fin de semana no tomé. It's big. It had been, I want to say, like three months where I've been drinking back to back to back to back every bender. weekend. Este fin de semana, I try to take a shot and you couldn't. Um, on Sunday, because on Saturday, no tomé, but on Sunday, we celebrated my sister, y no podía, güey, me daba asco. So, ojalá que también tengo, yeah. que tenga esa epiphany that you yeah. had, para ya dejarla completamente, because even my trainer's like, you're not gonna grow, like, yes. your muscle if you keep drinking all the time. It's so bad for your body, yeah. But I think what helped me actually really stop too is that before that festival, I had been doing therapy. Okay. And I don't know, I was just, you know, in therapy, you open up. So I was telling my therapist like, oh, I'm drinking like a lot. I'm drinking like every day. And he goes like, oh, well, by definition, you're an alcoholic. Oh, shit. So when he told me that, yo me senti así like, oh, hell no, I'm not an alcoholic. What do you mean? You know, he's like, yeah, like people who have more than two drinks a week by definition are an alcoholic i was like oh man, baby I'm, I'm i need like, to be put in i was like now. i need to be put in rehab right now. right now right now like, yeah that's how i felt so i was shook and it sticked with me like when he kept repeating it, every time i'd vent to him about it he'd treat me like an alcoholic so then i guess that made me stop but honestly he was wrong for that because he was kind of judging me yeah and i wasn't like, an alcoholic i'm over here trying to go to like a judge free yeah. zone mm -hmm. yeah, like kinda, yeah it's like guys that i would bring up alcohol he'd be like uh oh like that, Sabias like judgy. Yes. Que aliviado. No, I was literally like, is this what healing's like? Uh, <laughs> I was like, like it's so horrible. Feel? And I think that led me to just stopping for a That's bit. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad que, pues, obviamente, whatever was the case, I'm glad que, obviamente, te sientas mejor. You're in a better place yes. now because alcohol, obviamente, aunque... Es un pinche desmadre, aunque te diviertas. It's not like, you know, something that we should be using so much. Yes. Hasta yo les digo a Irma y a Danny, like, yeah, we've been drinking too much. Ya le tenemos que parar. But it's just hard trying to break that cycle. So I'm it's super so happy hard. for you, friend. Antes de que empecemos ya bien con el chisme, yo quiero que nos digas un poquito antes de que empecemos. ¿Quién es Jonathan y a qué te dedicas? Okay, so I'm Jonathan Chavez. I am do adult entertainment. Say now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, wait, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No shame. Um, I'm Jonathan Chavez. I'm a TikToker, Instagrammer. I don't do YouTube. I have a YouTube channel, but I don't yeah. really do it. Um, but I've been doing social media since like 2018 officially. And right now, I've decided to start doing music. But yeah, that's who I am. I started with comedy, um, skits, you know, all of that stuff, making a fool out of myself. Así yeah. de todo. You, <laughs> yes. There was a time where you were doing YouTube, though, remember? Yes. Porque me acuerdo que mm -hmm. se like a lot of challenges, Dude, and I yes. would watch it. Why'd you stop? Because I was doing gummies on YouTube, like edible mm -hmm. gummies, and I had a bad trip on one. So, yeah, nunca and that jamás. was what would get me views. So in a way, I was sacrificing my body. I was becoming addicted for views. I, know, I'm just ah, <laughs> I was like, it's I don't like session. these gummies, but I'm going to take them just for views. No, it, kidding, it really no. does feel like that, though. Because no, it does even feel. me, like, mm -hmm. I started, I mean, it's different, like, from, like, the, like, gummies and everything. When I was doing YouTube, when I first started, yeah. I was doing a lot of mukbangs. People oh, loved yeah. them. The views were amazing. Pero como dices, I love se sacrifica mukbangs. uno. Mm -hmm. Like, engordé yo siento como 150. 50 libras just really? from doing just mukbangs. Mukbangs. Yeah. Oh my god. Wait, también porque tragábamos de masa I'm like, yeah, wait, don't blame like us. I'm like, don't put yeah. all your fucking trauma on the people. Yes. Pero no, sí it's como true. que te sientes como que, oh shit, people love this. I gotta continue doing it. Yes, yeah, so I kept doing it. And also like family's watching mm -hmm. and went before that yo nunca fumaba ni nada so my mom seen that I bet she was thinking like ay este fue, se fue a California y vean lo que se ha hecho se loco. <laughs> yeah, ah, se loco. Se loco. like who is he hanging out with but also it was during pandemic um, but yeah stop doing them because of that and also like I applaud YouTubers, but I couldn't like vlog or anything. Yeah. Like, se me hacía bien difícil editing, me daba hueva, coming up with ideas, you know, being in front of the computer like for hours because you it are in front hours. of hours. Yeah. Yo pienso que la gente piensa que un little YouTube vlog es de un segundo y no. No, güey. No, tienes so que long. primero entretener the whole time you're on camera. Yeah. Segundo, tienes que volver a revivir el momento. Dude, a veces. A revivir el momento. A That's revivir. what I would struggle with because sometimes like. 
I would turn on the camera and then I wasn't in a good mood. So everything I filmed, like when I would rewatch it, it wasn't like, like you would get, yeah. or, or like even then it's like me, it's like, I live a very like fast paced life uh -huh. where I'm just like, okay, I went to a concert yesterday, forget about it, move on to the next thing. Yeah. So like now I, I feel like I've become a bad YouTuber now where I'm like, I, I used to upload every single day on YouTube Yeah. for three I years remember. straight. Mm -hmm. I remember like, I don't even know dude, how I would yes. do it, dude. I was like, hoy en día ya no puedo, wey. I'm barely going to take out a vlog that I filmed two weeks ago. And right now I'm thinking, I'm like, fuck, I got to relive that whole weekend. Yeah. So ya para empezar, ya con el chisme, yo te quiero conocer un poquito más. Yo siento que la gente te conoce, pero no a la totalidad. You know, yo quiero saber, y voy a empezar con la pregunta that I always start off with. How is Jonathan Chavez growing up? ¿Cómo fue tu infancia, amigo? I mean, honestly, I had so much trauma when I was little that I blocked it, so I don't remember it. No, I'm kidding. Ah, <laughs> like, so don't ask me. So it. don't ask don't me about trigger that. It. No, honestly, I had an amazing childhood. I don't remember like anything bad. I grew up with a single mom, as you can tell. Because ah, <laughs> that's what people, okay. that's how they offend you on TikTok now, you know? They'll be like, like no, oh, where's your dad? Yeah, like, yeah, we can tell you have no dad. No, yeah, I don't have a dad. Um, I just grew up with my mom and my two sisters. And it was a pretty chill um, childhood. Like, all I have are, are good memories in Denver, Colorado. I'm from Denver, Colorado. In the cold. I don't remember, like, ever saying, ay, no teníamos para comer, or no teníamos para vestirnos. No, it was all, like, good. Pobres, I mean, pero pobres, miles. pero... Y tenían yeah. lo que necesitaban. Teníamos lo que necesitábamos. How was it like growing up without having a father figure in your life? Did, ¿Se te dificultó? I mean, honestly, like, growing up without a father didn't affect me. Ay, mis greñas. Until now is when it's, like, affecting me. In That's, like, way? a weird thing. Yeah. So I would always say, <laughs> I would kind of shame people who talk about, like, their trauma that they didn't grow up with a father, que no tenían papá, and I'd be like, get over it. Like, a lot of us didn't, you know, like, just make with, uh, with life what you have. And now I'm thinking, like, oh, maybe, like, I'm this way because I didn't have a father. Or now I get in relationships, and I think maybe this is how my dad was. And now it's coming to me, like, why people bring up that they don't have a father, right? But when I was little, I would ignore it. No me hacía falta. I actually would be so grateful because I would hear kids complain about their fathers y como yeah. how they were mean how they would bully them or how they just didn't have a relationship with them so I'm like I'm glad I don't have a father who's like mean to me or who like bullies me thank God that he died you know did like that. he, died? Wait, he did you? die he oh, did he die did. Yes. how did you find out about that well he was never in my life but he died at the age of when I was eight okay. éramos de, he was in Mexico so whenever I'd go to Mexico somos de un pueblito I'd see him there, right? So I knew who he was, but we didn't have a relationship. No, like he wasn't. Hola, papi. Yeah. No, it was no. just like, señor. It was like, uh, who hola. even is that guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when he died, he I was in third grade, and I remember like the night he died, I was I was so excited because the next day I was gonna go on a field trip. I've talked about this on live. I was gonna go on a field trip, and they wake me up at three in the morning. My mom and my sisters crying, and I'm like, "What's up?" And they're like, "Oh, your, um, your dad died." So I'm like. Me cagaron mi field trip. Ah! Yes. So I'm there like, okay. Like, que que but I didn't understand my sister's crying because I was like, why are you actually crying? I till this day asked that. I'm like, did you actually love this guy who wasn't in our lives? You know, like what, what feeling was there? So yeah, they, I had to go to Mexico al funeral. So no, fui the, the field trip. No, and I was so mad. And till this day, I'm mad about it because it was such a good experience. Like they went to over there in Denver. It, it was called the Pepsi Center. That's where they were taking us and the field trip. And they were gonna, we were going to meet like, I guess, basketball players, the Nuggets team. Uh -huh. And they were going to give us like goodie bags. And I missed that to go bury this guy who I didn't know. So all, the whole time I was there at the funeral, estaba yo con mi carota. And they would be like, I remember my grandma from his dad's side was like, oh, why aren't you crying? Like we're all crying. And I was straight up like, well, I'm not crying because I didn't know him. You yeah. know, like, why do you want me to cry? I will say this, that me traume because when I got to, um, it's my first funeral. Okay. I'm, I'm like eight. It's my first funeral. And he's in La Caja and Mason. Oh, do you want to see him? And I'm like, oh, well, I guess. And they go, and I don't know who it was. Like, I think it was my grandma. They picked me up and put me on top of like the casket. So all uh. I see is like his face. And I still Palido. like till this day can tell you can like me like from that face. I thought he was going to like open his eyes and come out, 
to life and like yeah. I don't know talk to me so I remember que from that like me que como en shock and then I would picture him like everywhere I couldn't shower because like with the door closed because I would think he'd come and get me like me asusté generally like, I was like que this, marcada yes en like tu como cabeza. trauma and I was like this is the most I've seen him I was like yeah. this is like the image that follows me I guess he you know se murió now he appears hoy en día was, todavía lo miras o ya no Sometimes. So I have a cute story, an interesting story. Like three years ago, pandemic, right before, no, when the pandemic had just happened, I went on accident to a podcast where there was a medium. And when I say I went on accident is that the people doing the podcast, eran los owners del restaurant in Pomona. And a friend of theirs was going to go with the medium to record the podcast for them. And he was like, oh, Jonathan, if you want to come hang out with me since we, you know, we keep saying we'll hang out and we never do, just come watch the podcast. So when I go, it's like 12 in the morning, I take a friend with me. So he's proof. And I have recording of all this happening. And when I walk in, the medium looks at me and he shakes my hand and he's like, oh, your dad is here with me. Mind you, I never have talked about this. Like, yeah, I didn't no, open no, up about it. Yeah, no, yeah. because I, I just post on social media like skits and stuff. I don't post anything about my personal life and nobody would know this. So I'm there like, okay, cool. Like, you're like, my dad's dead. I know. Ah, I was like, like, I don't ah, <laughs> I was like, I know. Estaba muerto yeah. de parranda. No, he's like, <laughs> he's like, your dad's here <laughs> with me. So I'm like, okay. He's like, he wants to talk to you. Yeah. I'll tell you later. So then I'm like, oh, hell no, I don't like this because. See, it freaked me out that yeah. he knew. So then when we sit down to, to the podcast, he's telling them about... So the restaurant owners, they wanted to know like what had happened to their sister. I guess that's why they had gotten yeah. the medium. And then the medium just after talking to them, talks to me. He's like, yeah, your dad came through and he keeps mentioning that he wasn't in your life. So I'm like, yeah, true. <laughs> I thought, like, like, can't tell you I'm trying to not give him the power that he's freaking me out. Yeah. So I'm trying to act like whatever, you know, mm -hmm. like and I had just moved to California and he's like, he's saying that you're like on a new journey and you're confused about where you're at, but that he's with you and that he that he'll guide you you know so i'm like damn well why didn't he guide me before you know and yeah he just told me he mentioned my mom's name my dad like the guy worded the letters out and it was my mom's name and you have never like never said never so out. i was like oh my god i was like this is getting creepy and i have the recording so one thing and do you mind so so one thing that I had to bring up with Jonathan is I one thing I had to bring up here was I felt like there was a father figure that was passed over for him and I asked you your dad is passed yeah. right yeah so I need to let you know your dad is stepping forward when he comes through here's the interesting thing though is that when he steps forward here I want to be very respectful I don't know if you here's the thing when he comes through I don't feel like there's a lot of like I miss you I love you and things of that nature so I feel like either one either he wasn't a man that was able to express that love to you or two there had to have been like either some sort of physical or emotional disconnect that was there before he passed over does that make sense please yeah like okay he was never in my life okay and he just mentioned my nephew who he's nine he died like years ago so he never met my nephew I mean we were kids and he just kept mentioning things of the press and so I was like yeah. this is my dad or whoever the fuck this yeah, is like, they know the stuff fuck is after that I started to think of that image again like it brought back that image, that of, image. When, of when he was dead That's just crazy. i had very i had forgotten about it or like overcome it and it brought that it brought that back. That's crazy. So, obviously, yes. you know, you get this image in tu cabeza cuando estabas chiquito. You go throughout your life. Se te olvida en un momento. And then you go to this podcast, this podcast by, accident, by accident. Y te revuelve el, el trauma. Did you feel like it hurt you reviviendo eso o sabiendo eso? Like, te hizo sentir any type of way? Not at the moment. I told my mom right away the next day. I was like, I went to a podcast and this happened. And we were both weirded out, right? But it it didn't like hurt me. It didn't like make me think about it. I was like, oh, whatever. Like, es el diablo. <laughs> I usually think things like that. You know, I was like, the enemy knows a lot of things about you. So I was like, that's not my dad. Can't have it who that was. I was like, I'm not messing with that. But then now I'm in a point in my life where I'm thinking like, maybe he is coming through some yeah. way, you know, like maybe he wants Se to tell. I keep thinking, yeah. yes. And I've gone to psychics and one of them told me, Last year, on my birthday, one of them was like, she did like this vision thing where she closed her eyes and hold my hands. And she was like, I see a guy coming through and he says he's your dad. And I was like, oh, he just is not coming through. Yeah. I'm like, this is creepy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes. I was like, que no te para que te murieras. No. And um, I was like, oh, what does he want? And she was like, he says there's secrets you need to know about. And that's how she said, like, when she said that, she opens her eyes and she's like, he left and left me on a cliffhanger. 
Oh my god, bitch! I would have been scared. Like, yes. what secrets? And I was. I never since have been questioning like, what secrets are you here? Like, as an adult, obviamente es algo super fuerte. You know, especially because it wasn't once, twice. It must be like, what the hell is really going on? Sientes como que ahora de adulto por no tener a tu papá in tu vida for a long time do you feel like there's you know pieces of you that you're trying to put together now as an adult where you're like wait ni yo sé quién soy mm -hmm. porque there's a lot of missing parts que quisiera saber yes yes i feel exactly that way because when i told you that the therapist called me an alcoholic my dad was an alcoholic okay. a drug addict everything above he was all that so when he called me that it triggered me because i was like you're not gonna tell me i'm like my dad yeah. you know this person who i hated who i've tried so hard not to be there's no way i'm becoming that and yeah i think that's like why i'm thinking about him again as an adult because i'm like am i going like following your steps and i'm becoming you like what is it you yeah. know recently i got a new therapist because that one was judgy this new one that i have she's so good because she says you can believe that your dad is coming to you you can believe anything but i think that what's happening is that you might want to forgive this guy and you might want to let go of the hate that you have for him because subconsciously yeah. you wish you would have had a relationship with him, you know? And you might be feeling guilty for wanting that because he did all these bad things, you know, to your mom. He was a drug addict. He abandoned you. So how could you love this guy? How could you want a relationship with you, with him? So that's why all this, like, you know, things yeah. are happening in your head because you're confused because the trauma is like activating you had it asleep for so long and now it's waking up and now you want answers and yeah that's crazy that, yeah. and it's something that obviously i can't relate in that aspect you know my dad's still here okay. but one thing i can relate in my dad always has been an alcoholic to this day and i feel like growing exactly. up yo le tenía mucho como odio hacia mi papá like yo para decirte güey cuando mi mamá nos daba de comer nunca era muy rara la vez que yo y mi papá comíamos en la misma mesa y a la misma vez. It was so weird because yo nomás de verlo me daba como sabe que and I'm like, come bien or do this or do Go that. Ahead. And I catch myself also like, keep in mind, he was an alcoholic, so le pegaba mucho a mamá y yo viví mucho eso. You oh, know what I mean? Yo lo, vi, yo lo miré. There was nights. It was funny because I was actually having this combo with my sister. Um, on her birthday, yo me acuerdo que de chiquito because le teníamos tanto miedo a mi dad. We didn't know how he was going to react. There was nights donde dormíamos con el cuchillo al lado oh de, la, de, de nuestra cama. Por yeah, si en caso trauma. lo pasa. It was trauma, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like as an adult, yo ya lo perdoné. Obviamente lo miro. Pero como dices tú, hay a veces that I wish I had a relationship yeah. with my dad. You know, obviamente miro mis dos hermanos. Tienen, aunque sea una relación rocky, pero tiene una relación con with su him. papá. Okay. Mi hermana también siempre ha tenido una relación con él. Pero yo pienso de todos mis hermanos. I've always have been the one, you know, que nunca me sentí conectado por él. Right. Ha de haber sido you por mi like sexualidad o whatever mm -hmm. it was. Pero there was never ever a connection. And I feel like now as an adult, I'm like, I wish I could. Not that it's too late, pero mi papá tampoco no se da querer. Right. You know what I mean? Hard. It's like awkward. Like, I know he loves us because we're his kids, pero no sabe enseñarlo ni él mismo enseña que se quiere él. So it is very hard. You know, exactly. even as an adult, tú no tienes a tu papá and you're trying to, you know, navigate the perdonar, the this and that. Y yo después de perdonar a mi papá y ya dejar eso atrás, it it's you. hard. It's, it's, hard. it's yeah. healed, but it's now a new thing that I'm trying to do. It's a through. new thing. It's such a hard thing, but like you have to, because if you just hold the grudge, it's just going to be there. You it's know? Like hard. You're just going to be hating and you're never going to like be okay at peace. Nos hablas un poquito de tu infancia, de que mm -hmm. cómo es crecer sin tu papá, cómo ha sido tu vida de chiquito. Sientes que hay otro momento, situación en tu vida de tu infancia que te ha cambiado la vida to the point where it's affected you negatively or positively to the person you've become now? Um, I don't know if like, okay, so I grew up with my mom and seeing her be, like being so independent and how she gets done things done for herself and not like deal with another man after that, you know, like, you know, if she doesn't have to, has affected me a little bit now in relationships. I'm a little bit like that. Like, no, like <laughs> as soon as I see a red flag, I You're walk like, away. Out. I don't yeah. even try to work on it. I'm like, why am I going to work on this? I'm independent. I'm going to be me. <laughs> Soy mamá luchona cuatro por cuatro. No, yes, yeah, like that's how it's affected me. I think I'm, she made me like so independent where I'm like unlovable. I don't allow myself to be vulnerable or like anybody get too close because then I get the ache. Even with friends, when they start to know me too, 
too well and they say like i don't know like keywords that triggered me that they're getting too close i'm like ew i need to cut you off You're right like, now no, you know too much yes, yeah, yeah. you know too much ew, you cannot be that close to me and i think that's how I've, i it's think hard maybe to it's keep, el like, miedo de que te hagan daño mm -hmm. el miedo de sentir like a certain pain que has sentido in the yeah. past. Yeah, or que me vean la cara into like, yeah, just that. I'm like, no, nadie me va a ver la cara. So, ¿cómo you know? te van las relaciones? Like, are you it's, dating? Is it hard? How's that been? I don't date. And everybody tells me to try dating, but I don't date. I mean, it's been like, you know, also with social media, yeah. like the first thing people ask you is for your Instagram and stuff. And I'm not saying I'm the shit, right? Yeah. Like, but when people see like your Instagram, they start acting weird. They yeah. do like, they start like, oh, why do you like have these followers? Or, or what do you oh, do? you're famous. Or like, yes. Or like they start like cringing at no, your it, videos. It literally is. <laughs> or or they, they start liking you for another reason. For another yes. reason. Like it's never. So now I'll try dating on like, like on I'm lying yeah. to them because I tell them I'm a, <laughs> I'm, I'm exposing myself. I tell them I'm a nurse. Okay. And like, I don't like if, in, like, I try to date people who are not like, you know, like who don't follow me, who don't, who wouldn't watch my yeah. videos. So another race technically. And they like, are like, oh, okay, cool. But then I'm like, I'm lying to you. This isn't going to work out. Cause I'm like not being genuine. I'm not being honest to who I am, you know? So I don't date. Um, and friends, the same thing happens yeah. when I try to meet random people on like from like dating apps or friend apps. The same thing happens when they see you're falling, they start acting like a little weird. I totally agree with you. You're siempre, desde high school, right? Like Danny has been the only guy that I've met. No, well, I met Danny when I was already doing social media, but I was still in high school. I wasn't doing it full force. I think I had my a couple thousand fun. followers. Pero ya cuando empecé yo a tener bien, bien a platform by senior year, That's yo true. me acuerdo que hasta las amistades, lo primero que te preguntan es, de tu social media. Yeah. Oh, how is it like being famous? Yeah. And I get it. We're not famous, but that just triggers us into like in a space where we're like, fuck, are they just trying to be cool because they think we're right. famous or they think we're at a certain like social status? Mm -hmm. And it does trip you out because you're does. like, wait, pues esta gente pues a lo mejor no va a querer estar a mi lado or be my friend or be my partner for the right reasons. Right. Or like some of them don't want to be like so much on social media. So to them, it's like you like them, but then they don't like what you do. So then they don't want to be part of it no more. And that like pisses me off because I'm like, oh. Me ha corrido a mí muchas yes. veces because my life, like, it's so crazy too when you do social media. Like, it's hard for, you know, hay mucha gente que me dice, oh, you need to differentiate, you know, your real life and your social media life. A lot of the time, my real life is my is, fucking yes, social media yes. life. Pues yo posteo todo. I vlog, I share my life with you guys. Just an example. When I first started introducing Irma into uh -huh. my channel, um, obviamente I was friends with her before social media. I started showing her on my channel. Gente, I don't know what it was. Ahorita la aman, güey. Pero hubo un momento yes, donde la odiaban. Le había comentarios. Oh my God. No, en verdad, güey. Like, sin exagerar. Like, I'm getting chills just yeah. remembering because Irma is so loved. But there was a time where people were like, she's using you, Alan. This, this and yes. that, this and that. Y obviamente ella miraba los comentarios igual que yo. Yo era uno de esos. And I, yo, ah, I was like, entre, yo me comentaba. I was like, like era una usurpadora. Yo la vi. <laughs> Literally, no, dude. And I remember there was a time where Irma was like, hey, I don't want to be in your video. Oh. And at the time, since I was daily vlogging, nos mirábamos todos los días y le dije, está bien, te lo respeto, right. pero también quiero que sepas pues que pues a lo mejor nos vamos a ver menos porque yo tengo que trabajar. Y en ese entonces, I would film, edit three to four videos a day. Oh That's God. how I was able to produce oh, so much no. YouTube videos. So there was a time where like, I would see her, my, todavía era mi amiga, You're pero like, escóndete. Escóndete. Or like me, oh, I can't kick it with you today. Mm -hmm. I'm working all day. And it gets hard because it's like, sometimes they like it and then they oh, see the comments. Y hasta como que tus fans make it awkward between friends and it's like, oh, yes, okay, they like, do. they don't like this. I life. think when you give them a, like an entrance to your life, they they think they can control it and they think they know from like, a little bit of clip like let's say karma and uno de tus videos is una cara for whatever yeah. reason like that she's going through or whatever and they think oh she hates him yeah. look i can feel it like and they and swear like, they can feel it yeah. you're, you're assuming something from a 20 minute video they run with it. It. i hate when i hate when i see comments that are like you can tell by the way that he she went like this that they love it's each not, other so much and it's so true like you like, got no, that bitch. from ah. that I'm always like, that's what you got from that little thing. And it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy how social media can be. But, you know, obviamente, you started doing social media at what age? 
I started doing social media like for fun, like since forever, like on Facebook when I was like 15, I would post videos and stuff. They wouldn't do anything. They wouldn't go viral. But yeah, bien, bien, serio. Bien, 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 it started like 18. Did you have a job before where you yes, went to I school? Yes, okay, I was, yes. I mean, I was in school. I was, well, I, yeah, high school. I was working and like, I had so many jobs. I had a Little Caesars job, Dairy Queen, Witch Witch, Taco Bell, and Einstein Bros. Those were okay. all my jobs in high school. ¿Cuál te gustó la mejor? Dairy Queen. ¿De cuál I te was, corrieron? Yes, ah, and that wait, one is the one I got from? fired from. Why? Well, technically I didn't, but uh, technically I didn't, technically I didn't. I got fired because, dude, they made me shift lead at 16. The guy really liked my work ethic because era yo no más solo there. And it was a Dairy yeah. Queen in a, basically where I grew up in Denver, it's called Commerce City. And over there, it's all Mexicans, like in that yeah. little city, it's all Mexicans. So nobody would go to Dairy Queen because había Michoacanas, había like things, you know, Dairy yeah, Queen yeah. was like, I. Like not it, yeah. Even and to it, this day, I don't think I go to Dairy Queens often. No, yeah. I think the only times I enter Dairy Queen is when I, I'm on a road trip and, and it's in the gas mm -hmm. station. No, but yeah, it's yeah. actually really good. It's so, well, I okay, love okay. Dairy Queen. But um, so nadie niva. So basically, like I would get things done quick, but that's because we weren't using anything. Mm -hmm. No había nada que limpiar, no había dinero que contar. So he made me a shift lead for like the 4 p.m. shift to 10 30 p.m. shift. And then when he made me shift leader, he, he hires two other teens, dude. And we become friends. So then I start like messing around, closing the door at like eight o'clock, two <laughs> hours before. You like, have a party? Yes, in there. literally, like two hours before closing, I would not close it, but I would turn the lights off so it looked like we were closed, closed yeah. and nobody would come in and we would just fuck around. I would tell everybody in high school to come and um, get free ice cream. And I would give them free ice cream, like large blizzards, de lo que quisieran, a sus familias, everything, like me valía, you know? We would always be fucking around, yeah. literally. We would even drink there <laughs> at the age of like 15, 15. 16, 16. Yeah, yeah. My, my friend, the one that worked there, the one that got hired, she got hired con un seguro y todo falso. So she lied to this guy. She was like 14, saying she was like 18. I, and she lied to me, yo no sabía. ¿Y se le miraba la edad? Sí, se le miraba. Era okay, de esas okay. putillas. Ah, <laughs> estás era, Yes. Yeah. Era de esas, de esas mujeres adelantadillas, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. But we were, we all were. So yo no lo, she even had a fake name. Till this day, I call her by that fake name, because yo la conocí así. Until later, like two years later, me dijo su real name y todo. And I'm like, You have todo, lied to me. Impactado, tú, yes, what? I couldn't, yeah, dude. Yeah. I couldn't like get back, like get used to it. So yeah, we fucked around a lot. And one time, la esposa del señor, the owner, she came up to me and she was like, I've been noticing that you've been giving free ice cream. Don't think we're stupid. And honestly, that's not okay. So I saw that it was coming that she was going to say like, you're fired. Like right before she was going to say it, I was like, oh, I quit. By the way, I've been meaning to tell you that I quit, that I got another job at Little Caesars. <laughs> Little Caesars was next door, like tan pegados. Yeah. And yeah, I quit. And then I went to Little Did Caesars. Did you already have the job at Little Caesars? No, but I made it up. And then they hired me right away because I had a friend that worked at Little Caesars and they hired me right away. Today's episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-proportionized ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make your home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That is why it's America's number one meal kit. With so many in-season ingredients, you'll taste all the freshness of fall in every bite of HelloFresh's chef-crafted recipes. Produce travels from the farm to your doorstep for peak ripeness you can taste. HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for you. Ingredients arrive at your doorstep pre-proportionized and ready to cook, along with pictured step-by-step -step recipe cards. How easy is that? I personally love HelloFresh because if y'all don't know, I'm on a fitness journey and it's super important to eat the right food so I can see them gains. Y honestamente, HelloFresh makes that so easy because sometimes healthy food can be a little boring and they always make my meals different and delicious. If you guys want to go ahead and try HelloFresh, go to hellofresh.com slash 50allen and use code 50allen for 50% off plus free shipping. That is hellofresh.com slash 50allen and use code 50allen for 50% off plus free shipping. Get started with HelloFresh today and see why they're America's number one meal kit.
So, obviamente, you know, you were working. Y en un momento empiezas a hacer videos. Yes. Pero en un momento they start picking up. ¿Cuál fue el momento para ti that you're like, you know what? Wait, first of all, how did you get started with social media? ¿Qué, qué es lo que empezó en ti that you're like, you know what? Chinga su madre, me quiero grabar y poner estos videos que grabo on the internet. I wanted to be like you. Like, ah, <laughs> I was a big fan. Ah. I had plan de matarte. I know the guy. Oh, <laughs> so, my yeah. God. I it's a, it's a, I turned into the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so creepy. No, so basically, siempre me gustó, like, since, since little, okay, so since we were little, nos gustaba entretener, teníamos un grupo, thanks to RBD, me and friends, me and my sister and friends, we made un grupo que era como RBD, and we would perform at parties, and then yo solo, I remember I'd go to parties and sing, so siempre me gustaba entretener a la gente, and have people laughing, yeah. you know, so I think that was it, just wanted to be on social media somehow, and just be like, on funny doing on social media. Yeah. You feel like you were a natural born entertainer. Yes. Y lo eres. Se te sale I, muy natural. Thank you. I you're like <laughs> gracias uh -huh. tell me something I don't know no I'm just kidding but um, but my plan wasn't to do it for like a living I was I was gonna go to college I did go to college I wanted to do like nursing actually that's why I say now I'm a nurse when I lie then like the moment where I decided to do it for reals was when I was in college um, I got I was doing my prerequisites and my videos on Twitter were blowing up like they were doing really good on Twitter good. yeah on okay. Twitter for some reason Twitter loved me then they hated me, but they loved me. And I got nominated for an award. It was called, like, the Tecla Awards. Uh -huh. And I came. It was out here in L.A. Y yo vine porque yo pensé que iba a ganar. I lost, by the way. Fuck them. Bitch, tell me why I thought you won. So I, I like, lost, wow, dude. Okay. I lost. Y se hicieron the awards. They, they're no longer a thing. But at that ceremony... Por eso. ¿Por qué mm -hmm, no ganó? I was like, you see what happens? And at that ceremony, I met Rocio, my manager okay. now. And she introduced me to, like, the agency. How it all would work. How I could make money from this. And I just thought, okay, fuck it. Let's do this. And... Was it super hard? Obviamente, vivías en Chicago. In Denver, mm -hmm. Colorado, Colorado, sorry. Y en un momento, you start blowing up and you move to L.A. ¿Cómo fue yeah. esa decisión? Was it a hard decision to take? Were you scared to take that decision? Porque, wey, vives en Colorado y luego te vas a mover a Los Ángeles. Yeah. That's crazy. How was that for you? It was scary, but I think I was young, so it felt like a rush of adrenaline. I'm going to do it. But I remember the day I was like... I was in anatomy in college and it was so hard. And I was like, this isn't for me. And I called my mom and I'm like, ya no quiero hacer esto, la voy a dejar. And she's like, pues, ¿qué quieres hacer? I was like, I don't know, something else. And I go to the office, like the counselor's office, and I drop all my classes and I end it. Then my mom's like, well, what do you want to do? And I'm like, maybe, I don't know, I'm good with animals. But Loki, I knew what I wanted yeah. to do. I was like, I want to no, go to LA. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. like laying my options so that she didn't think like, oh, está loco. So then I was like, maybe I'm good with animals. Maybe I should be like in veterinary school. She signs me up for veterinary school, right? Like she goes with me. We pay the tuition on the spot. And I'm like, fuck, why did I say this? Yeah, now I'm going to have to leave it. this. LA, I yeah. didn't think she was gonna be down to yeah. like go to the, the, the other school and pay the tuition because it was a lot in tuition and stuff so then the first day of veterinary like not veterinary school it's like a veterinary program like veterinary school you're gonna think I'm gonna be a vet right yeah but it was like yeah like also getting my prereqs to learn and then work with animals and the first day I'm like okay I'm gonna be honest I want to go to LA and like do acting I still wasn't being well I was being honest because I did want to do acting but I still wasn't being fully honest so I was like maybe I could go to school out there in LA she's like okay pues so I drop out of that school that she signs me up I call New York Film Academy in Burbank I sign up for them it's a program it's like a six week no six month program for acting and she's like ¿Y donde vas a vivir? Okay. so I tell them oh maybe with my cousin I have a cousin out here and she's like okay fuck it and I come out here and COVID hits and the the New York Film Academy, they're like, oh, we're going to do everything remote, like online. And I'm like, how am I going to do acting online? Yeah. Like, I, like I need to, to be physically yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah. I drop out of that and I just start doing social media. And to her, it felt like, I don't think it felt like a trick. Yeah, it kind of did feel like I tricked her because she was like, you pensé que ibas a ir a actuar y que ibas a hacer eso en la escuela. It Not just like, played out mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. yeah. Now social media. And I'm like, oh, well. Y like, pues aquí estoy, yeah. Emma, haciendo videos. Obviamente yeah. te hiciste súper, súper viral por tus videos, you know, imitating la típica mamá hispana. Was there anyone around you, family, friends, that doubted your, you know, ability to succeed in the industry? No, dude. And honestly, like, when people say that, I always ask them, who told you that? Yeah. Like, who told you you're never going to be shit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or who told you, like, we don't believe in you? Because that never happened to me. I don't think people are that straight up, yeah. you know? Maybe you feel like they don't believe in you, but no, nobody ever said, like, oh, no, like, 
you're never gonna be That's anything. Crazy. No, no, I mean, everybody was like, a lo mejor si me juzgaban loco, yeah. ellos solos, verdad, like este tonto. But nobody ever openly said it, like, you're not gonna be anything, you're gonna fail. No, like, they were all like, oh, which cool. is good because that mm -hmm. means you have a very supportive, you yeah. know, system. Because yo me acuerdo cuando yo empecé, um, I started doing little videos like 17, you know, I was doing makeup uh -huh. and I had my one job, which was at the OC fair for a month. And then, because I was only seasonal. Yeah. And then after that, ya nunca me iba a volver a trabajar. Oh so, yo me acuerdo cuando yo empecé, yo no sé cómo chingados le hice, güey, because there was months where I was only making like 500, 600, but at the time I was living with my boyfriend in his mom's house. Uh -huh. uh, porque yo me mudé con él como a los meses de estar juntos. Really? Because I was trying to escape a lot of toxicity in yeah. my own home. You were running away. Um, entonces, yo me acuerdo que mucha gente dice, oh, ¿y cómo tú crees que vas a poder ganar dinero haciendo That's eso? Yeah. ¿Por qué no te vas a agarrar un trabajo de verdad? Eso no te va a dar. Oh. And like, it was a lot of doubt. And for a long time, I remember there was, there was convos I had with Danny where I was like, fuck, maybe I should go get a job. Yeah. And Danny también me decía, babe, I think you need to go get a job. <laughs> like, like, yes, no le vas a hacer. Yeah. Porque había un momento donde Danny ganaba más que yo. He had a nine to five. Yeah. Yo trabajaba haciendo mis pinches videitos por yeah. a little change that I would make. So there was a time where he was even like, babe, like, you might, yeah, you like, need to go like, get a I'm job. I'm glad you're thinking rationally now. Literally, and <laughs> I was like, like oh, go. yo me acuerdo que en ese entonces yo dije, no, no, yo no voy a agarrar un pinche trabajo porque yo sé que esto se va a hacer. Oh, and that's when I started yes, doing YouTube is. every single day. Uh -huh. At the time, we were already living in our own apartment. Uh -huh. y yo me había movido he was paying all the rent. No, 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 no. So the reason why ah, his mom, no, the reason why we moved in because at the time I had gotten a collab, I had a makeup product in Ulta stores. Oh, okay. Y me habían oh, dado so un pinche there, check yeah. de 50 mil dólares. Oh, yeah. You were like sad. So me and Danny were already having problems mm -hmm. with his mom because we were like, we don't like the way we live here. Like, you want too much for what we, like, we're barely home. Like, what uh -huh. do you mean? Whatever. And me acuerdo when that check hit, me and Danny were like, we can move out. If yeah. we disperse the, the 50K, But yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah, like mm -hmm. we have enough for at least a one year lease. If by the year I don't make, we don't make it, go back home. Right. Pero la cosa es, we got los 50 mil casi no lo acabamos by the third, fourth month. How? Bitch, one, <laughs> gastando. Two, when you live alone, it's expensive. It is expensive. Amoblamos toda la casa al mes. Oh, New it's because y'all got crazy two, with three, it. Thousand, like everything. No, ustedes pensaban que los 50 mil was like... Y like, yeah. like para toda la vida. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because yeah. if you go back and you look up Alanized apartment tour, ese pinche it's video que one? les hice... Todo compramos nuevo, pero casi nos quedamos sin nada. Oh, so yeah. that's when Johnny was like, babe, like you're We're not gonna... making money on, on little Instagram. You're making like six, seven hundred dollars a month. Get a job. Oh, y yo dije, no, voy a hacer YouTube. Y me, me fui con todo. Y a los dos meses of doing YouTube, I was already getting ten thousand dollars. From just minimum. YouTube alone. Just YouTube. Oh my God. I remember my second month of doing money. YouTube every single day, ten thousand. I was like, wait. I'm good. Dude, that YouTube like money is so good. It's good. And it was better back then, no? Back then was mm -hmm. better. Yo me acuerdo I que antes, that. antes, I know, wey. Bien, You're yo like, decía, ay, no, yo puedo ser rico pobres. haciendo esto. Pobres ustedes, los que yeah. no creyeron en mí. But it's crazy. So, obviamente, you know, you start doing social media. You're out here in freaking LA living your dream. Obviamente, you weren't independent at the time because you were barely making money. You're living with it. What yeah. was that moment for you that you're like, you know what? Money's coming in. I can make this a full-time job. I was like you one, like in, like in February, I was like running out of savings that I had brought yeah. from Denver. And I was like, ¿Cómo va a seguir pagando renta aquí? Because I was paying them rent yeah. and like all my bills. And I called my manager and I was like, I think I'm going to go back to Denver. Like, this isn't working now. Like, no me ha venido nada. And I'm not making money from anything. And in that, literally, she's like, no, I believe in you. Like, it'll work. And she hangs up, right? And then calls me like an hour later. And she tells me like, oh, I have a brand deal for you with Snickers. Oh. And it was like a lot of money. So I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I can I can make it work. And like you, con ese check, I was like, I'll make it work for, for like, like two, a three year. Months. Yeah. Like, I'll stay. And things just kept coming and coming until, you know, it built into me staying here. I'm, I'm going on four years now. That's crazy. Yeah. You must be fucking proud because imagine yeah. fucking living in a new state, bitch, with no, like your mom's not, your mom's not out here yet, no. right? ¿Tienes planes de quedarte aquí por siempre o quieres regresar para atrás a Colorado? Ah, uh, dude, I want to stay here forever, but I have that battle where like I feel lonely. Yeah. I do feel lonely, but I love everything that California offers, you know, like all the beaches, everything like you get to do, like there's so much yeah. to do. I feel like going back to Denver for some reason, it feels like a step backwards, but it's not, you know, if I wanted to, I could, yeah. but, um, it just feels like I'd go back to like, 
like home just home and like it, it would feel for me it's like oh you failed it would please you like emotionally it would but please not, me emotionally um, professionally yes. like you would feel like fuck mm -hmm. I'm in LA now I'm going back home la cagué yes. cuando tú empezaste a hacer videos y te hiciste super viral you know you were going super viral for your videos of imitating la mamá típica hispana aunque todavía haces videos de comedia obviamente hemos visto que you slowed down specifically on the hispanic mom videos to focus more on your music ¿por qué has parado de hacer muchos videos de comedia? Uh, the hispanic mom videos los dejé de hacer because ya soy gringo like, uh, <laughs> no so basically like Dude, so honestly, like I got, I had like, I don't know if you can call it an identity crisis, but basically people were starting to see me as a señora, like in DMs, yeah. like they thought I was a señora and people would like meet me and just want me to say señora things. And people were starting to think that I was this old ass señora. They're like, where's your fucking shirt that you make into uh, your the wig? The shirt thing triggers me. Yeah. Like they'd be like, where's the shirt thing? Where's like all that? And I remember started fucking me up when people like my age didn't really want to hang out with me because I was like a señora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like they couldn't relate to me. And I was like, wait, well, you no, know, like I'm not a señora, you know? So I, it started to fuck with my head. It started to really like, I started to be so self-conscious about it like i was like wait that's how i'm viewed like a senora like no i'm not a senora you know and people like in messages they would be like i remember i would talk about like oh i want to hang out with people who are more my age if you're like if you down to make friends hit me up and people were like oh i'm down like you know you're like what 36 i'm like 40 and i'd be like what the <laughs> actual fuck you're like bitch i'm 20 yeah so i'm gonna say i'll be out as a character like i was like oh no I need a rebrand right yeah. now. Like, I need to find myself. I need to be myself because it was fucking with my head. Like, que me sean comadre and stuff, which, I mean, I did that. I can't yeah. blame them. It went so far. It brought me so many good things, you know, like so many projects. It was amazing. And I'm glad I made people laugh with that. But it started to like, people were starting to call me like hateful. Yeah. Like people were starting to take, you know, when you see something so good that you believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like some comments were like, oh, he, you can tell he's toxic like that. Yeah. Like those señoras, you could tell like, que es venenoso como ellas. Like you were imitating the like, <laughs> no, es él. Like, ya no lo miraban yeah, como el personaje. Exactly. Yeah. They'd come in like, oh, another hard watch. And that's why I was like, this has to end. Was that scary? Obviamente, obviamente nos cuentas that there was a moment where you're like, I need a rebrand. Obviamente, these videos is what made you. Was it scary to be like, you know what? I'm going to rebrand, eliminate that from my brand. Y chinga su madre que sea lo que tenga que hacer. Yeah, I'm going through that where it's scary because when I decided to stop, you, everything was based yeah. off of that. So it's like, a, it's like, okay, I want to like now be me, but people didn't follow me for yeah. that. So it's like, are they going to leave me? And then I'm starting from the bottom again, which is what it's felt like recently because a lot of people are messaging me like, oh, like I followed you for this, not that, you know, a lot of brands have stepped away. And that's where I'm like looking at it like, ah, like this is the price you pay. I was like, I know, this is like, yeah. I'm like, this is my come up story. <laughs> no, it feels like that. Obviously, yeah. I'm still so blessed. But even like, even my manager was like, just know like that this change, it's just going to affect everything you've created like and everything brand. you're used to, you know, your brand, everything you're used to, all these like brands coming to work with you, all these contracts you have, they're going to no, yeah. fuck with they're you. They're paying for you know, pack Jonathan yeah. el de la camisa yeah. on his head. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Like it got to a point where like they would book me for that. And then I'd be like, you know, like, yeah. and they'd yeah, be like, well, we booked you yeah. for that. So then I was miserable during the shoot. And it was just like, ah, oh, like now I got to balance. What do I want? Do I want money or do I want to be myself? Do you want to be happy? Yeah. Uh, or be happy. So when I started making music, One of the songs I recently dropped is called Drogas. <laughs> and I remember that's when my manager called me and she was like, okay like what are bien, we, yeah, yeah they're yeah. like what are we doing because like brands are not gonna want to want to work with you after that because the cover art is me eating smarties so it looks like pills yeah. right but i was like ah oh, stop like it's not like that you know it's like a it's, it's just a form of an expression yeah i'm expressing yeah, yeah. like what i want to say in this song and everything So it's scary. It's I'm scary. still going through it, like through finding out like the balance in it. Yo siento que es algo que a lot of creators maybe, you know, go through. And at the moment you feel like, fuck, I'm done. Aquí quede. Mm -hmm. But it just depends on how much you really want to be you and how much you want you to succeed. Y lo vas a hacer. Yeah. Lo estás haciendo. Obviamente ahorita maybe you're getting backlash because of the change. Pero yo sé que va a llegar un momento donde la gente mira bien quién eres tú de verdad y les va a encantar. Obviamente yeah. nos cuenta 
letras de tu música. En el 2021 lanzas tu carrera musical con yes. la canción Sin Parar, which uh -huh. let me just say in that moment, that song would be played in all the Halloween parties that would oh catch my God, you. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> Oh, Dude, no, I it was that. a good song. I it remember. Was, yes. Te la pedían, güey. Uh -huh. Y hoy en día ya tienes ocho canciones y las que se vienen. Yes. ¿De dónde empezó tu, la idea de querer crear música? Where did that inspo come from? I mean, honestly, like, I've always liked music and I've always done it. Like, I told you, I, when I was little, I would perform at parties and stuff. And I would write a lot of songs. I have journals of music that I would write, like, when I was back in, like, middle school, high school. But I was so intimidated, like, posting myself singing because people would bully me. Like, I remember I would post my singing videos and people would tell me, what the fuck, like, take that shit down, yeah. you know? So I got self-conscious about it, so I never did it. But once I came out here to L.A., I met people who were in the music industry And I remember they were like, yeah, if you want to make a song, make it. Because I would come, like, I would tell them, oh, I like music. I want to make music. And they'd be like, do it. Until one day at a at a restaurant opening, I told this guy, oh, I've been wanting to make a song for the longest. And he, like, knew people and I guess has a record label. So he was like, let's do it. And he put this crew together. And that's, like, where we, when we made Sin Parar. And from there, I loved it. Like, when I was making Sin Parar in the studio, I was like, this is fun. Like, yeah. I like this. Like, we're just vibing. And it doesn't feel like work. Like, I'm enjoying it. Let's do it. It. like let's keep making more and I mean I haven't been super consistent with it because it's been years now and I've I only have eight songs to me that feels like a little but it takes time yeah. and I'm investing in it like I'm independent I don't have anybody you know really helping it's me. all you it's, it's all, all me work. it's yeah. all me putting it together so that's why it's been slow but I like it and I'm having fun with it I'm not expecting much from it now Just to me, enjoy it, you know? Yo me acuerdo cuando primerito lanzaste Sin Parar, I remember everyone was excited about it, right? Because yeah. they thought it was just like that one song you're dropping and yes. then you're going to go back to your comedy videos. Uh -huh. And to start off, the song was good, you know? Yes. Durante los años, we see you kind of stop making all this comedy content that your followers were used to seeing. Y pues te empezaste a enfocar más en la música. Sientes que ha habido muchos de tus seguidores that maybe don't support you or don't believe you in this new, you know, chapter of your life yeah they like a lot of them tell me like oh another wannabe singer all these tiktokers wanna yeah. be singers you know and i mean i get it like it looks like that because i feel like even i would say that <laughs> like, yeah. like, like ah, i, I feel like that, yeah. me as a hater as an a spectator i would be like yeah yeah can't cantar. but it's just about like you know if you don't like it Oh, yes, I'm all quoting Nikki. If you don't like me, that's fine, but <laughs> watch your mouth. No, I'm just kidding. Like, if you don't like it, you don't have to make it verbal. Yeah. You know, I tell people, like, I see that things on the internet that I don't like, people that I don't support, and I think horrible things of them, but I don't voice it because that's not needed, you yeah. know? And I've been seeing a lot of, like, stay in your lane, go back to making comedy. But honest, they, they'll be like, that's where you shine. <laughs> that's the one I get there. Like, that's where you shine, where you make skits. And, I mean, I'm trying not to let it get to me because I really enjoy making music. Yeah. Um, and like you said, when I dropped Sin Parar, so many people supported it because they thought that. So I think a lot of people that see me now really pursue it also is like a... a Like, they're projecting their own, like, yeah. sueños frustrados. They see that I'm actually going for it, so it might piss them off. You know, sometimes people on the internet are people who, like, people who go on the internet, they go to stress relief yeah. from the lives they hate, you know? So they let all their veneno out, and it's like, okay. Y te tocó a ti yeah. agarrarlo. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's fine, you know, go ahead, say what you want. I'm gonna still do it. I like it. Yeah. I do it for me. I really do it for me, like to please me. And I feel like, you know, it gets to a point where as a creator, obviamente ya tienes muchos años, you know, in the game. And I feel like it's like, llegas a un momento donde dices, okay, ya hice este video, este, 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 ¿qué más quiero para mi carrera? Right. No necesariamente qué más quiero para mi canalito, para mm -hmm. mi leroche. No, tú ya estás pensando en tu carrera y obviamente tu carrera, tú estás viendo una carrera musical, you know, um, hopefully in the next couple of years que puedas tenerla bien, bien puesta. And I feel like eso es lo que la gente no le gusta. No le gusta la idea of evolution. No le evolution. gusta la idea of you pursuing your dreams. Because like you said, this has always been a dream of yours. No más que nunca has tenido la plataforma, nunca has tenido los the recursos, money. the money. Mm -hmm. So now que si tienes todo eso, you would be dumb to not take advantage of it, right? right? ¿Qué tienes que tú decirle a la gente que posiblemente te dejan comentarios así um, over something that you're trying to pursue? I, I want to tell people that, like, 
It's not that I'm being thrown into music, that I'm paying all these people to make it happen for me. I do it because I like it and I'm working on getting better every time. You know, I'm learning about like instruments. I'm learning how to produce. I try to better my voice because I like it. You yeah. know, I want people to know that this is real, that it's not like, ay, lo está haciendo por hacerlo. I'm not, you can't even say that I'm doing it for money because it's not taking off yeah. yet. You know, it's like the start. It's not generating. So, yes. Yeah. So just know, see that, um, that like I'm working on it and that I'm trying and also like you said like you were mentioning like the video things am I gonna like I always tell myself am I gonna just continue doing these videos till I'm actually a, a senora, senora? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> till like I'm that. grown yeah, like yeah. that you know it gets tiring it yeah. gets old we grow as people you know people who work like you know we've seen a lot of like talk of nine and five nine to fives and how they want to leave them how they don't want to do that anymore that happens to us too yeah. you know like as a creative mind your mind goes everywhere yeah. and when you put a creative person in a box and that that's all you can do they're gonna go insane because yeah. they want to branch out they want to they want to so do much. more yeah. yeah they want to do more so just get that if you don't like it again like you don't have to support it you can just you know unfollow don't listen, but don't hate, yeah. you know, like, don't hate. I think, like, our community, like, nosotros los Latinos or Hispanics or at least Mexicans, we're so hateful towards each other, yeah. you know? We hate to see each other come up. It's like, it's like it bothers yeah. people to see us come up. Like, we don't, we don't uplift each other. And I think that's why I'm getting a lot of hate because that's who yeah. my followers are. The majority of them, you know, they're, like... I also Latinos. think, like, I, I love that because I totally agree with, mm -hmm. like, how us, como Latinos, casi, we stop each other's bags. And I feel like that comes with, you know, the traumas or just how we got raised because yeah. we were raised as in a Mexican can only do this much. Un Mexicano, yeah. pues, es para esto y esto nomás. It, it really is like that. You know, we yeah. hear it growing up, like... Yeah, you can be successful being Mexican, but it's very, you know, very few yeah, it's become very few. real successful. So siento como ya yeah, being on social media, you know, we are one of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yo siento que la gente que nos sigue nos mira como uno de ellos. So cuando nos miran querer hacer algo para o sobresalir like ourselves you like, no, 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 mm -hmm. tú quédate en tu lane déjate bajo para acá, te hizo, te en la tierra you ain't shit, they try to you, tell and it's you. crazy mm -hmm. because it's like they can support you for so many years for something that maybe they agree on and the moment that they, you do something they don't, boom, yes. hate exactly and like i hate that because we'll support other people mm -hmm. like we'll support other big artists in the industry that are not our people why can't we do that for us it's crazy you know? yeah if we win we all like if Literally. one of us wins we all win you know what i mean like i want people to get that y, y yo siento que vas a llegar en un momento en tu carrera donde tú vas a estar en el alto you know so hablando del alto tú empezaste esta carrera musical no para nomás tener una canción para que no Tú empezaste para que peguen, you know, right. y para ser a big star en un futuro. Yeah. Obviamente, si ese momento, cuando, no si ese, cuando, cuando ese llegue. momento pase, do you feel like you'll slow down completely with your comedy content, pues para enfocarte más en la música? If people really like, if I grow like a fan base that likes my music and I get to like perform and I get to be on all these things. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like I'd stop doing what I did in the past because I gotta, you know, yeah. now do the few, the, Thing that I'm doing but I I will keep showing like my personality I do want people to still know like if you think I'm funny I guess I'll keep showing you those sides of me because yeah. I think that's also good to resonate with people you know like you want to connect yeah. you want to be relatable and I feel like you'll also be able to share even more of you because you're funny but you're funny through your skits mm -hmm. through your but now you'll be able to be like no like there there no needs to be a skit like you're yeah. gonna think I'm funny mm -hmm. because I am a funny I'm person I'm funny alone I'm like, like <laughs> No, it's, like that's it's, it's not as good anymore. It's true, though. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a really funny, mm -hmm. relatable person that, like, va a llegar un momento donde a lo mejor no vas a necesitar de tus skits, you know? Yeah. Obviamente, nos hablas de, you know, going to therapy, you know, your healing. And in your music, también lo hablas a lot. Do you feel yeah. like your mental health has been affected negatively or positively from the day you first started social media to now? If so, in what way? Yes, a lot. I used to not struggle with depression. Like, I didn't know what that was. I was the guy that if you came up to me and told me you were depressed, yeah, I'd yeah, be yeah. like, can you be happy? Like, literally, I'd be like, just don't be sad. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was so, like, ignorant. I didn't know what mental health was. I was like, I anxiety, like, what is that, right? And after social media and doing it for so long, yes, it's like now I know what being depressed means now i know what anxiety is i think like when like 
being on social media, you feel as good as your last video performed, you know? So then that, like, just, like, if a video does bad, your whole day is like, am I not good enough? Am I falling off? Like, am I not going to be able to hold this anymore? What do I do now? How do I become more creative? And then you just become, like, a slave to what people say, you know? And that just fucks you with your mental. Like, I'm more introverted now because there have been times where I'm myself on camera and somebody's, like, Oh, he gives Republican vibes. <laughs> so I'm like, You're like yeah, not yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, so I'm like, I'm not going to be myself anymore. You know, like, I'm not going to speak. I'm like going to be reserved. So it's made me more introverted. It's made me more anxious. And yeah, like it makes me doubt myself. It's made me change my appearance, like makes made me less confident. You know, I used to not worry about my yeah. appearance, you know. I used to just be confident who I was. And now, like, social media makes me, like, uh, do I look good? Do I need to do this? Do I need to be... Like, to try to keep up with what they want to see. What they want to see. Not what makes you feel good. Yes, or, like, you know, like, I remember I never worried, like, for my nose. And, like, in some videos in the past, they would comment about my nose. So then I, like, considered, like, oh, should I get a nose job? I didn't, but I was, like, should I, you know? So they just, like, you know, it tears you apart. I've never been able to describe the feeling of, like, what you said right now, like the you feel how your last video mm-hmm. performed, and that's true. Yeah. Because that's something that me, like almost 10 years into this, I still feel that way. You know, like if a video does bad, I'm like, fuck, man, should I be thinking about getting an actual job? Yeah. Or what? Y luego los días hace bien y ya, ya me, me yes. siento bien. I'm like, ah, ya, ya le you're hicimos, like, ya comimos it. este mes. Do you recall a moment in your career where you're like, fuck, everyone's affecting me and it's affecting my mental health? ¿Te acuerdas de un momento específico? Doing social media. Mm-hmm. Like what made you change your perspective and what started affecting your mental toll? Yeah, that, when they were calling me a señora, they, I, it's just when I was like, fuck, no, I'm not a señora, yeah. and it just started to fuck with me, and it just made me feel so old that I was like, at one point, I was like, I should have never done this. Yeah, I was like, I should have stick to, like, nursing. I should have just never put myself out there like this, and I should have just lived, like, a normal life, and I would have been me, and, like, I would have been taken as a, like... 23 year old not a senora i wouldn't have all these people making their minds of about me and choosing like what i do next or like how i live my days and yeah that was it when they started calling me an actual senora and do you feel like now that you know you are rebranding te sientes aunque sea más feliz i'm happy more with myself yes like i notice everything slowed down like on social media people are like uh like yeah quiere ser whatever like he did this he did that but i'm happy with myself like i wake up happier with who i am i know i'm healing because i cry more <laughs> and i used to not be open with my feelings yeah. i used to be so closed off but now i'm so open with it and i know that's like because i'm finding You're myself healing. Yeah. yeah, and you're finally letting yourself see the traumas and live through them and heal them. Yes. Because siento que, you know, nomás escuchándote hablar, yo siento que mucha gente va a poder tomar que por muchos años te gustaba, like, lock your feelings lock away. Them. Lock them in a box. I don't want to know about them. I don't mm-hmm. want them to affect me. Yes. Y yo siento que te dañas más y se daña uno más porque it's like you're not going to live your whole life bottling up all your traumas, no. all your feelings, cuando en verdad lo que tienes que hacer es Deal with them and yeah. heal them. So, obviamente, nos platicas de tu canción Drogas. Yes. Uh, y nos platicas mucho de, pues, you know, el cambio físico. Obviamente, si van al primer video, you look completely <laughs> different. Yes. You know, even the way you express yourself, the way you dress so yourself. Different. Y mucha gente, lo estábamos platicando ayer, mucha gente siempre te andan comentando de que qué chingado está pasando con Jonathan. Luego, después de que lanzas tu canción Drogas, está haciendo drogas porque está perdiendo mucho de peso. ¿Qué le tienes que decir a la gente o qué tienes que decir de ese tema? That it's true. I am on drugs. Ah. <laughs> no, um, yes. So like last year, I remember I posted, I went through something like, I was going through like a mental breakdown. So I lost a lot of weight. Oh my God, I should have been standing like this. <laughs> I lost a lot of weight and um, I posted pictures and I didn't know how much weight I had lost. I guess you don't notice when it's you. Yeah. And the comments were like, oh, it's meth. Oh, he's on drugs, you can tell. Oh, pobrecito, like, I hope it's not too bad. I hope he can save himself. Then, like, following that, people started sending me messages, like, sending me rehab places. Like, they, like and and own, like, what do you call, own drug addicts, extra, what do you call people who used to be Like, drug survivors. Addicts? Yeah, survivors. Yeah. They were like, oh, don't be afraid to speak up. I went here. I can help you on this journey. Like, it take it day by day i was like damn what the hell like people really do think i'm on drugs and they just ran with this like narrative that i'm on drugs so i was like okay 
I'll give them drugs. I'm just <laughs> like, I'll do them, man. I'll play the I'll part. Que piensa, yes. yeah, I'll be the part, bitch. I was like, I'll play the part. No. So then I made a song before the allegations of me being on drugs. I had made a song when I made Sin Parar. I okay. made Drogas. Jokingly, we were playing with the B, and I was like, Esta noche me... in my head, yeah, yeah. Esta noche me voy a drogar. and we like scrapped it. Then when that happened, I was like, okay, I'm going to drop the song, but the music video is going to speak about how drugs can be anything. You know, yeah. it can be like being addicted to your phone, being addicted to sex, being addicted to like... Being happy, being, whatever. Yeah, it's like, like a high was, that yeah. you get from something. I was like, drugs can be anything that we use to cope with, like whatever we're going through if we abuse it. So I dropped the song and people just were like, he's definitely on drugs. Till this day, I get like, if I'm on drugs, people are asking. I guess the weight loss, though, is because I stopped drinking. So when you stop drinking, like you look less bloated yeah. everywhere. And also like I cut. Um, so when I lost that weight because of my mental breakdown, I wasn't eating and I liked how I looked. I was like, oh, but I like how I look. I was, yeah. like, I was like, at least they think I'm skinny. <laughs> it, so I was like, I'm going to create a diet that can help me sustain this weight without actually me starving yeah. myself. So I cut off sugar. I stopped like eating like just bad. You know, I, I started looking at like diets that would be like good for like weight and everything. So I think maintaining the weight. Is what led to people thinking I'm I'm still on drugs, but it was just like my dieting and no alcohol that's kept like my weight this way. Obviamente, you know, online we really can't, um, you know, control lo que la gente dice. Igual como a ti te critican a mí ahora yo que he perdí mucho de peso. Even though I feel my best, just like how you feel your best at this weight, nunca falta gente que me pone en comentarios. Oh, he looks sick. Ay, pobrecito, se pasó de verga, perdió de más. <laughs> And it does yeah. affect your mental state because yo ahorita me siento lo mejor que me he sentido. Y luego miro comentarios así and I'm like, damn, do I not look as good as I feel? Yes. Did that happen to you? Did, you know, the negative comments or the accusations affect you in that way? Yeah, it's like sometimes I feel so good. I look at myself and I'm like, okay, like you look good. And then somebody's like, oh, you look miserable. I'm sorry you're going through this. I'm sorry you're sad. I get that a lot, that I look sad, and I'm like, oh, maybe it's my aesthetic. I was, yeah, like, like, I was like, I'm a broke boy inside. No, yeah, it's like, I get that a lot, that I look sad, and it pisses me off, and people are like, you react to it because you really are sad. I'm like, no, I react to it because nobody I'm wants not, yeah. to look sad. Like, you're telling me I look miserable. Like, of course I'm going to react to it, right? But, yeah, they tell me I look sad. I don't know why. I don't know what about me looks sad. I don't know, see... Set me up. I mean, my favorite artist is Billie Eilish. Okay. And I'm always streaming her. <laughs> I was like, like maybe, maybe set me up. I, I was like, I think maybe I want to, like, I think I'm, like, channeling her, you know, and I think looking what it is sad. Too, I feel like you're, like, a monotone, like, not even, like, not even that you look sad. Yo siempre te he visto como, like, a person that's, like, you're, like, very much like me. Like, you're, yes, te gusta el desmadre, pero yo pienso que la gente piensa que tienes que actuar como en tus videos yes. a todo mm -hmm. momento yes. and that goes back to like no saben separar el personaje con quien en realidad es Jonathan exactly. and you get stuck in the oh Jonathan Chavez es el personaje es la mamá hispana no Jonathan Chavez es Jonathan Chavez igual como Jonathan Chavez know, Selena drugs, Gomez es Selena Gomez y luego Selena Gomez es Alex Russo right exactly you know, no saben separar. people don't separate it right like una cosa es la comadre anda, y otra es Jonathan Chavez Drug addict does. I know, ah, just <laughs> no, it's crazy because yes. you know, la gente en verdad lo toma como ellos quieren. And then they take a yeah. narrative that fits to their liking, that fits to their excitement. Porque yes. como dices tú earlier, mucha gente les gusta vernos para como desestresarse, salirse yes. fuera de su mundo. Entonces, si ellos están teniendo una vida miserable, pues quieren que pues también alalen pues o al Jonathan también tengan una um, vida miserable, aunque sea, aunque no la tengamos, pero en su mente quieren yeah. que la tengamos para que ellos no se sientan tan yeah, miserables. La, yes, y a la gente le gusta el morbo, you know, like mm -hmm. people are not going to be happy about like, people are not going to get entertained by a good story, by good news. They want to have something bad to talk about, you yeah. know, like les gusta making things up. They'll follow that. Even me, sometimes yeah. on social media, like, I'll go with the ugliest theory, you know? I'll go with, like, yeah. <laughs> or you'll see yeah. a cheese when you're like, damn, you yeah, really are true. a bad yeah. person. Yeah. <laughs> All los joints sad. Yes, you know it's I mean? happened a lot where I'm like, oh, come on, they weren't that bad, you know? But yeah, we all follow that because mm -hmm. it's más sabroso. Es más, los hey, literally, it's más sabroso. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> Por eso la gente le encanta el cheese, yes. porque they thrive off of it. They love seeing, they like, love real... It. 
people going through shit mm-hmm. because they're like, oh, I guess I get a break from my yeah. miserable or whatever chaotic life I'm going through. And it's crazy because and that's why I gave them that song Drogas because I was like, OK, well, you know, I'll milk it. Yeah. But honestly, it wasn't anything like that. When I posted that, though, it's like it got sent to the dare community because all the comments were like, oh, like say no to drugs and like it was all moms like just commenting about their kids and how i was like telling their kids to do drugs and was your mom at any point concerned seeing you know obviamente hablan pero luego mira lo que mira online did you ever feel like she expressed any concerns like maybe like oh mijo estás bien no she knew what i was going through like mentally but she was just like oh i guess it's not good that they're saying you're on drugs because eso te afecta ti, yeah. you know in your job and i was like no let them talk it's fine I was like, as long as you will. know yeah. that i'm not on drugs you know but I don't know. She doesn't tell me if she's worried. I don't know if she is. You know, me living over here alone. She might think like, I used to can get allá. Yeah. You know. Your mom mm-hmm. lives in freaking Colorado. Mm-hmm. My mom lives twenty minutes, and I don't see her as often. And she worries. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Especially because online, I'm always drinking. I'm always in el desmadre. Lo que yes. miran, pero no miran lo centrado que estoy durante la semana or what I'm going through during the week. You know. Hablando de tu música on October six. Hace poco acabas de lanzar tu canción Amor Propio. What inspired you to create that song? ¿Qué es lo que te inspiró y qué es lo que dijiste? ¿Sabes qué? Estoy sintiéndome así o this is going on. I'm going to pour it into a song. Well, when I made Amor Propio, I was like, so this whole year has been of me, like this whole past year Mm -hmm. has been of me like healing, letting go, um, becoming a new person, you know, going to therapy, all that stuff that you do that's boring for healing. I mean, I don't drink, I don't go out. So I feel like I've been like cooked up in that. And when I made this song, when I went like to make this song, I was like, Oh, you know what? I'm ready to like be like, I'm ready to not like be so healing and yeah. to like fuck up a little bit. I was like, so the term amor propio is como decir, ya me amé demasiado, ya me hice de todo, ya me curé. I say in the song, a mi corazón ya le pagué la terapia, ahora le voy a pagar unos shots a mi garganta. So that's what it's mean. Like, yeah. I already healed. Let me be wild a little bit. Let me, like... Disfrutar. Let me make... Joven. Yes. Yeah. Let me make bad decisions because they're fun. And that's where it came from. I was like, okay, I'm done of, like... I'm de- I don't have to live my life so perfectly. I don't have to heal every day. There are days where I can fuck up, yeah. make bad decisions. And it's just, like, get in a toxic relationship because they're the best. <laughs> <laughs> like, that friendless. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's crazy because that's so fucking real. I feel like... Like yes. a lot of us, especially because, you know, obviously it's important that mental health has become such a big topic. Pero siento, because even I struggle with it, I feel like sometimes because we're like, oh, we're on our healing journey. We need to yeah. heal. We need to heal. No nos damos esas oportunidades to still have fun because we're like, no, that's against everything I'm working for. Right. But it's 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 so real the way you explain it because like you're so young. Tienes que disfrutar la vida. Tienes que cagarla yeah. para poder sanarte. You know what I mean? And it's good. Obviamente en tu canción hables. Ya le pagué la terapia. Ahora le voy a pagar shots. Piensas tomar, you know, in the future. Do you like, you know, your sober lifestyle that you're going through right now? I like my sober lifestyle. Um, I do want to drink in the future. Some days I want to drink like casually, like go for mimosas with friends. But now what's holding me is that I'm like, oh, am I going to be bloated? Like now I'm so self-conscious yeah. and I have body dysmorphia that I'm like, how oh, if I drink again, like, am I not going to look like I look now? Cause yeah. this is like the best that I feel for myself. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know if like people agree, but I no, feel you look good. good. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, Oh, am I going to like be bloated? So now I'm thinking about that. But yes, I do think like in the future, like maybe in a couple of years, I feel like you loved it because you felt like it's what you needed at the moment and you're mm-hmm. doing your healing. Y cuando yeah. te sientas listo, una, dos shots al año no hace daño, ¿verdad? Right. No, I don't tell people like, I tell my friends like drink, like when we go out, they think they can't drink because they're around me i'm like no drink like yeah. please do i don't i don't shame it i was like i know it's a good time only like if you're doing it because you want to cover something up like some sadness that's when you should worry but like do it for fun yeah yeah and it's good yeah. so if you guys haven't streamed amor propio vayan yeah. ahorita en todas las plataformas que puedan y también vayan a ver el video oficial you guys no se lo pierdan go show your support ya para terminar yes. esta entrevista thank you so much by the way for thank coming on here and opening up on a lot, about a lot of things yo quiero saber en donde te miras tú en los próximos cinco años casado y con hijos Esa. Ah. 
it's like i mean part of me yes i think that's why i said that i know that sounds weird no i see myself focusing on music still doing music hopefully hopefully performing somewhere i do want to perform at festivals that's my okay. dream to like just be outside and performing yeah, yeah. going crazy on yeah stage like and... i don't know at night with the that's stars like that's a vibe right but um whatever comes uh, you know i do see myself married but not in five years no okay. that's too soon so tu quieres hijos también acabo de decirlo. i do want kids How many? i used to not want kids but then recently i wanted two okay two kids or yeah at least two but i see myself with my music hopefully still entertaining people hopefully still here you know um and just like still focusing on myself it's crazy because cinco años se van a ir rete rápido la yes. última vez que te tuvimos aquí eran hace like tres four, años three, four, ya yeah. casi cuatro en otros cinco you guys vamos a hacer oh otra entrevista si todavía no he hecho yes. de pendejadas the thing y va a ser un little update so thank yes. you so much once again for thank coming you. on yo sé que toda la gente allá en casita te pudieron conocer un poquito más and a la mejor understand a little bit about who you are or why you're doing so. things porque a veces la gente mira algo súper rápido que un cambio súper rápido y se empiezan a crear historias, yes. methods, and, uh, theories, when it's like, no, eso es lo que he, he pasado por mi vida, eso es lo que soy, yeah. y quiero que sepan. So thank you once again for being thank vulnerable. You. Yes. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to go ahead and follow Jonathan, I les voy a dejar todas sus redes sociales on the screen and down below para que vayan y lo sigan. Y también no se les olvide to follow me on all my socials para que no se pierdan any future episodes. And with that being said, thank you so much once again. Thank you. And thank, thank you guys you so guys. much for listening Bye. and watching. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, Bye. guys. Ah, yes. That was so good. That was good. I had fun.